Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 24 of my design patterns video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the mediator design pattern. So what is the mediator design pattern? It is used to handle communication between related objects that are referred to as colleagues. All communication is handled by the mediator, and the colleagues do not need to know anything about each other. And the Gang of Four's definition is that this mediator design pattern allows loose coupling by encapsulating the way desperate sets of objects interact and communicate with each other. And the mediator design pattern allows for the actions of each object to vary independently of one another. So let's look at some pictures and make sense of all this because it's very simple. Basically what you have here is your mediator which is an interface and then you're going to have a concrete mediator from that point. And then you're going to notice by looking at this is the mediator interface and the abstract class which is going to represent all colleagues that are created all share common methods. And how they're going to communicate to the mediator is through the use of these common methods. And then the client is going to deal with both a concrete mediator or mediators as well as concrete colleagues. And the colleagues are going to send messages to the mediator and the mediator is going to turn around and send those messages if needed to other colleagues that need to either buy or sell stocks, which is the example I'm going to use in this presentation. So let's jump right into the code. Okay, so here we are, and since we're going to be dealing with stocks, I'm going to create an object that I call stockoffer.java. And this whole presentation, for the most part, is going to be done out of my head, so this is going to be all improv, because you guys seem to like whenever I do that. So, just to keep this really simple, I'm going to say, okay, well, what do I need to do to trade stock shares? I'm not going to worry about prices and all that, because that's not really important. But I am going to need to know the number of shares, or at least I'm going to in this situation. And then, of course, I'm going to have to have some information in regards to a stock symbol and then what else do we need about uh, an integer that is going to tie all of the colleague codes together so some of these things I might use some of them I might not use but we're gonna improv our way through it and should be somewhat interesting so I'm gonna need a constructor for this guy and let's say its number of shares is gonna be passed to it and then a string that's gonna represent the stock symbol and then let's say a colleague code of some sort that's going to allow me to differentiate between the different colleagues. Well then I'm just going to come in here and do stock shares and all of this code is available underneath the video if you want to just copy and paste it instead of going in here and trying to type it and then I'm going to get my stock symbol throw that in there and then this is just going to be stock and then we're going to have my colleague code for each one of these stock transactions that we're hoping to make and there we go so there's the constructor for creating all of these potential buy and sell offers of stocks and then this is going to be really simple I'm just going to provide a way to get my stock shares and then we're basically going to do the same thing here just copy that and provide access to my stock symbol and then this is just going to be stock symbol is going to be returned and this is going to be a string and then this is just going to be get colleague code and it's going to return a colleague code so that is going to allow me to create stock offerings. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is come in here and create an abstract class that's going to represent all of my colleagues or people that will be putting through those stock offers that I just typed in there. So I'm going to need always access to a mediator because we're going to be calling mediator methods as you saw in the UML diagram we did before. And let's also say that we want to have a colleague code defined for all of my colleagues that are created and then this is very important you're always going to have a creation of a new mediator so all of the colleagues are using the same mediator and then mediator is going to be equal to new mediator that's passed over so that's something we're always going to have and then we're going to go public void remember we said sale offer is going to be offered every single time and it's going to be string stock int shares and then to initiate this sale offer we're going to go hey mediator Mediator sale offer. I want you to handle this, and we're going to say stock shares this is a reference to this object and we're going to send the colleague code whenever we call that so it'll be able to track which colleague is making which offer and then the buy offer is going to be almost identical of course it's going to be called buy offer and then this is also going to be called buy offer and then this is all going to stay the same and then the last thing public void set we're going to have a colleague code 
different set. Like I said, it's just a unique ID number for each colleague that's going to be created. And this isn't what makes the mediator design pattern these colleague codes. I'm just using them so I can keep track of things here. What makes it is the fact that a whole bunch of objects interact with a mediator object. Okay, so now that we have that all set up, this abstract class, let's copy that. And then I have a new object I'm going to create called Gorman Slacks, and it's going to be one of these colleagues. So we're going to come in here and we're going to get all of the different methods that we're going to need. Add constructor is going to be the only one, even though it's going to have access to all those other ones, of course. And then in this one, just to know that our colleague has been created, I'm going to go system out, print line. And in this situation, I'm going to go Gorman Slacks signed up for the exchange and then throw a new line in there. And there we go. So we have that all set up. And then JT poor man's going to do exactly the same thing, except JT poor man's going to be like that. So that's it. So now that we have those set up, let's go into mediator.java and create the mediator that's going to handle all these colleagues that we're going to create. So it's going to be an interface. And here, of course, we're going to create all of the different methods that we're going to use for the colleagues as well as for all the mediators so they can all communicate. So it's going to get a stock, it's going to get shares, and it's going to get a colleague code sent. So got that set. Let's just copy that. Buy offer is going to be pretty much identical. Actually, it's going to be identical as far as this knows. And then we're also going to want to add a method, add colleague, which is going to be passed a colleague so that we're able to keep track of all of those guys. And file save it. So now that we have the colleagues all set up, now we need to go in here and create stock mediator. So let's do that. And here it is, public class stock mediator implements mediator. And it's going to help me out here. It's going to say there's some methods you need to implement. Great, add unimplemented methods. And there they are. Now, as we think through here, exactly what we're going to have, let's say array list, which is going to have all of my different colleagues. That's something that could be de definitely useful. And I'm just going to call that colleagues. And then I'm also going to choose to create array lists for my stock offers. So there's going to be two stock offer and one of them's going to be stock buy offers and the other one's going to be stock sell offers. So let's do that. And then let's also say that we need a way to track these colleague codes. So let's create an integer inside of here. Colleague codes. And let's start each one of them out at zero. And this is going to increment as we add more and more colleagues. And then I'm also going to have to have a constructor for this stock mediator. And it's not going to do a whole lot. It's basically just going to initialize all of these arrays. So colleagues is going to be equal to new array list. It's going to have a bunch of colleagues inside of it. So that's all this is doing. It's initializing those arrays. Pretty simple stuff. And then stock buy offers. We're also going to initialize that. And stock sell offers. And then this is an array list of stock offers. Based, based. All right, so we got that set. Pretty simple, actually. All right, so what do we need to do here? Well, before I forget, let me see. I'll add colleague. Actually, I think this makes more sense if we put add colleague up above. So I'm going to copy, cut that out of there, paste it right here. And what do we need to do? Well, each of the colleagues is just an object. So we need to go colleagues. We're going to add it to our array list. And it's just going to be colleague like that. And then what else can we do? Well, colleague codes, that's what I called it, right? Yep, colleague codes. We're going to increment that when a new colleague is created. And then I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to change this to new colleague that and change this to new colleague also so that I can come down here and go new colleague and go set colleague code. And then colleagues code is going to be this guy right here. And let's bounce over there and make sure that I have that set. Let's go into colleague.java. And do I have, yes, yeah, set colleague, see? And it's going to be sent a code, and then that code's going to be set up here. And as you saw, we're just incrementing it, so no big deal. And as far as I can tell, that's all I'm going to have to do there. So let's go in and get rid of this first. And then we're going to go into sale offer and start working our way through this. Okay, so if we get a sale offer, let's say... 
first off, boolean, and let's say stock sold is equal to false whenever it's first created, because that's obvious. We need to track if the stock's been sold or not. And then we're going to increment through our stock offer. So temporary is going to be offer. Then we're going to go stock buy offers like this. And we just need to say, okay, so sale offer, here's a sale offer. Then we need to increment through all of our current buy offers to see if anybody's interested in buying that stock. So that's all we're doing. And currently at the very beginning, stock sold is equal to false. Well, then just thinking through this here, uh, we need to go offer, get stock symbol, which we created before, and see if it is equal to stock. And then what we're going to do is pretty much the same sort of thing. We just want to check to make sure that the stock is the same. And also we're going to check if get stock shares are also equal. Based. Okay, so they're selling the same stock and they're also selling the same number of shares. So what do we want to do in that situation? Well, let's say we want to print out a message in that situation and we could say something like shares. So that's number of shares is what shares is of now we could say stock, which would be the stock symbol. And here we'll just say sold to colleague code. And then we want to get our offer colleague code. Actually can't do that. We have to call get on that. Jump over here. Yeah, get colleague code. So let's copy that, jump back over into Stock Mediator and paste that in there. And there we go. So I've got that all set up. That's saying, okay, well, we did find an offer. I know you want to sell and we found somebody who's currently wanting to buy that very specific stock and that very specific number of shares. So what do I want to do if something like that happens? Well, I want to erase that buy offer from our array list that keeps track of all that and just say, hey, this is the offer that we want to erase because that's what's set there. And then let's say, okay, stock sold. Well, that's now equal to true. Remember, we set that to false. So now it's true because we just sold it. And then if that's true, we want to say, well, we don't want to cycle through this anymore. So stock has been sold because we don't want to check if somebody else wants to buy it because we sold it already. And let's Let's throw a break statement in there and that'll just throw us out of that loop and then after we get done with this for each statement block that we have here let's say we go if stock sold and then we could do another message that gets printed out and in this situation i'm going to go shares plus shares of and then stock is the stock symbol and then we could say something like added to inventory like that and what we're basically doing here is since we were unable to sell the stock we want to add it to our inventory of future stocks that we want to sell so we're gonna to have to go stock offer i'm going to call this new offering it doesn't really matter what you call it since it's going to be a local field and then we're going to new stock offer shares and pass it stock and then also the colleague code so it's going to create a new stock offer and then we'll go stock sale stock sale offers so we want to add this to the array so stock sale offers and then we'll just go add and then this is the new offering that we want to add to that array list i'll save that and that's pretty much all set up. And then we have our buy offers down here. Well, the buy offer is not going to be that much different than our sell offers. So I'm just going to copy that code and sort of go through it and make it work. So let's just copy this and paste that in there. Tab that over. So in this situation, stock and this, we're trying to sell one. So we want to check if the stock was bought or not. And then we want to cycle through the sale offers, not the buy offers. This is going to be the exactly the same. We're just checking to see if the stock symbol that is for sale is the same as the stock symbol that they are offering to buy. This is all going to be the same. And this is going to be sell offers. And then down here, we're going to go shares. In this situation, we have a match shares of stock except this is going to be bought by colleague code, then print out the colleague code that bought it. And then this is going to also be sell offers. We want to remove that sell offer. And we also want to mark the fact that this stock was bought. And then we're just going to copy this right here, paste it in right there and jump out because we got a match. And then in this situation, we're going to check if the stock was bought or not. And then we're going to go shares of the stock added to inventory. We can leave that exactly the same. So that's going to be a new buy offer that's going to be added to our inventory. 
Then we're going to go new offering just like we did before. All this is exactly the same, except this is going to be changed to stock buy offers because we have a new buy offer on the table. And that is basically it as far as I can think through here. So what else might we want to do? Well, we might also want to get our stock offerings printed out the screen. So let's just go get stock offerings like this. Just copy this for a second. And then let's say we wanted to say, throw a new line in there just for the heck of it. Stocks for sale. And this is going to print out all of the current stocks that are for sale that the mediator knows about. So then we just got to go for stock offer, temporary solding sale offer. And then we're going to go stock sale offers. That's going to be stock sell offer. See, I'm improving this, so occasionally I might make a little mistake and forget what I called something. Paste that in there, and that's good. And then we're just going to go and print out another batch of information. And here we're just going to go offer get stock shares. And then we'll say that's the number of shares of. And then we'll come in here and go offer get stock symbol and that's going to print out the number of shares available and the symbol for it and then close that off and then we're actually just going to copy this because we're basically going to do the same thing whenever we print out all of the stocks who are offered to buy so we're going to go and call this stock buy offers and then we just need to change this to stock buy instead of stock sell and we don't need to change anything else there so as far as i can tell looks good yep 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 Good, don't have to mess with anything. So let's go in and check it. And that's where test stock mediator comes in. So the first thing we're gonna go is go stock mediator. And let's say NYSC for New York Stock Exchange, new stock mediator. And then we're gonna go Gorman Slacks and just call him broker is equal to, capitalize that, new. And you can of course make these a lot different in regards to the colleagues or the mediators or any of them. And then we have to pass the mediator to it. Don't forget to do that. And then we're also gonna do the same thing. And these are normally used whenever we have colleagues that act in completely different ways. So they might make certain calculations or Whenever something happens, they may act in a different way. And that's one of the reasons why you would use them. I know that mine are very similar, actually identical almost, but having colleagues that act different and calculate things differently, but still talk to the, the mediator in exactly the same way. That's the thing that's important. So let's go. Our broker is going to make a sell offer. And let's say he wants to go and try to sell himself 100 shares of Microsoft. That's the symbol for Microsoft. And then we could also say this broker sale offer and Google. And let's say he wants to sell 50 shares of Google. And then just to save ourselves Sometimes let's copy this and then let's say broker two comes in here and let's say he wants to make a buy offer for Microsoft and he wants to buy 100 shares. And then let's also say that broker two wants to make a sale offer of NRG stock and he wants to sell 10 shares of that. And then let's say broker comes in here again and goes buy offer and he wants to buy NRG and he wants to buy 10 shares. And then at the end of that, we're stock mediator. Let's say we wanted to get stock offerings and print out all the offerings after all these transactions have gone through. We'll go NYSC dot get stock offerings like that. And then we'll cross our fingers and save it and execute it and see if it worked. And there you go. Looked like everything worked. Gorman Slack signed up for exchange. JT Porman signed up for the stock exchange. 100 shares of Microsoft ad inventory. Google, Microsoft was bought here. And you see that's the reason why nothing shows up down here. Same thing with NRG stock. And it was both added inventory. And then it was bought by Kali Code 2. So there is the mediator design pattern with the UML diagram and a great big giant code example. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.